Sign up for Nebula using my link and watch next week's video right now. That's right, friends. Bet you didn't know Cinema Wins produced this movie. My bestie MBJ came to me and said, you know, for legal reasons, I'm going to say this is a joke now and move on. As someone who never snuck out of the house as a kid, I'm always impressed with the guts of kids who did. Especially if Marianne Creed is your mom, because as previously mentioned, she does not play around. Dang, as the whitest boy in 2002 suburbia, I'm here to say, dang, that's a smooth transition. I love the elements of the song that have been playing in the background since the film started, blending in like score, but what's so genius is that it sounds so familiar. And then Dre kicks in and almost everyone born in the 80s or early 90s goes, that's what it is. Not the most memorable track off the Chronic 2001, but as track two and the first actual song of the album, it's up there with classic album openers, which definitely sets the vibe. And Michael B. Jordan coming in hot in the director's chair, taking a cue from Coogler with a gorgeous water right out of the gate. He captured the hazy golden glow of the lights that transitioned to the blue spotlight by the door and then back into warm tones on the inside with the twinkly lights. The set design and lighting work together here to just scream quality. My name is Donnie. Nice to meet you. How y'all doing? Glad to see Donnie had confidence even when he was young. Make him miss. Yeah, that right gonna be open confidence even about boxing. In the first Creed, we get the feeling that Donnie was a fighter, but more than just a brawler. Raw, but still knew what he was doing when Rocky started training him. This is such a simple explanation that gives us great backstory. On you? Come on, man. Legality aside, love the confidence of betting on yourself. Not only does Duke see Donnie betting, but he definitely knows that Donnie shouldn't be out there at his age. Just adds even more context to why he refused to train him at the start of the first film. And making a villain sympathetic isn't new ground, obviously, but there's barely even a hint that Damien is a bad seed. He's just a young boxer taking the shots he can get, and he really does look out for Donnie. He gives him his cut, and when they get busted, he never snitches. Pretty dang likable for a villain. Also, I'm gonna have some nice things to say about adult Dame, but young Dame, Spence Moore II, does some real face acting in his limited scenes. I'm done. You remember me now? Violence is often not the answer, but reckon your abuser? Hard to argue against it. Interesting transition to go from hitting to getting hit. Still so fast. Fast slipping, fast punching, fast, fast, fast. Pretty Ricky's really going to town. As Musa and Ryan would say, he's all diced up because everything isn't going down. For now. Is, is something I missed? It's funny? Yeah, man. Check me. A lot of this movie is about how Donnie blocked Dame out and tried to forget him, but some stuff stuck. Watch it. Check me. Love that they can talk to each other through all the noise with ASL. Man, Jordan's sense of time as a director is already impressing me, giving Creed a moment to look around. I'll project my own interpretation that he's looking for Rocky even though he knows he's not there, but then his slow crane down, tilt up as he stands up that we've seen in every movie. He's calm, the score is measured, it's all stellar. Nope, I think I'd rather just get punched in the face. Nope, I think I'd rather stay home and make out with Julia. I assume those were the options. But the win is for Donnie's RDJ Sherlock moment. It truly is a chess match for him. And obviously Michael B. Jordan's workout routine. Aw, good guy, Donnie. <laughs> Accurate dad naps are powerful. Heck <laughs> yes, this man looks good in everything. It's infuriating. But yes, it's still a win. Also a great dad, don't let anyone convince you that you can't do tea parties and dress up and whatever with your kids. That's a real man right there. I'm trying my best. Aw, uh -huh, but he still can't sing. No, no, no. no. These two have so much chemistry, they should be wearing lab coats. Oh, gosh. I wouldn't have thought hoodie sport coat combo would work, but something tells me paper bag Snuggie works for Jordan. Tell Drago to call me. I know we actually see it later, but I love that Drago and Donnie are buddies now. Dang. It's like one second, but Jordan's delivery here is so good. It says everything he's feeling, which is kind of everything, like all the emotions and what comes out is feigned and reserved excitement. You probably made it to Africa. Easier this time, last time he was dragging Claw. You know what I remember? You knocking my ass out. <laughs> You know what I remember? He'll be your big head back up. This whole scene is so well done, but good lord, I love his interaction. It's just peak guy energy. Whatever you need. I don't hesitate, bro. Stop straight, bro. Seriously, Bianca and Donnie have chemistry, but goodness, do these two work well together. <laughs> She's seen that face before. I promise you, I am not going to have another stroke tonight. It so doesn't work like that, but dang it, is that exactly how I would be? I can control this, no problemo. What is with these movies and health problems? 
I'd like to know if Major's put on this bark noise he makes when he punches or if it's natural. Either way, it's so dang perfect for Dame. You don't owe this dude shit. Nothing. Good reminder of how little Donnie has told anyone about Dame because he does in fact owe him quite a bit. Come up and so, sorry, JK, JK. Kids punching each other is very bad. That said, in what world did that kid think bullying the child of heavyweight champion would end well? I know that you think that you are protecting her, baby, but she has got to know why she wants to fight, not just how to do it. Oof, that's a lot, almost like the exact thing Donnie struggles with in every movie. Subtle little dominance assertion showing us that Dame is taller than Donnie and makes Donnie feel like a kid again. For real, I know things get rough, but he's just about the most likable, sympathetic villain ever. Okay, maybe second. How many goal records you got? I have a few. Seamless exposition letting us know just how successful Bianca has become. Because of his fame, it'd be easy to assume the house and lifestyle is because of Donnie, but clearly they are both killing it. You think I could just snap my fingers and make you a contender overnight? Ain't that what happened to you? He's not wrong. Donnie did work for it as well, but much of his initial fame and opportunity were a result of nepotism, which I'm not necessarily criticizing. People have been given the hookup to their friends and family since the dawn of time, but as is the case with lots of folks, when they do find success, Donnie feels like it should be different for other people, and I like that Dame is calling him on it. If Apollo Creed could take a chance on some underdog, why can't you? Oof, hitting him right in the Balboas. Ah, a little taste of what's to come. He's telling you who he is, right? Believe him. See, Duke knows. Don't get quiet now, Dookie. I love his little shot that he calls him Dookie that we think he's already left and then he just walks through the background. It's like they forgot to get coverage of Dame, but it works so well, the camera doesn't even focus on him. I love it. The silence of the room, just score, a real he's becoming a bad guy montage. But the shot of the ankle monitor reminds us that he really has it harder than the rest of the folks in the story and we're almost endeared to him since he's working out alone. Each character gets their own gradient captions, and I especially love Amara's pink ombre. Can text beep ombre? Sure, why not? Okay, so I actually just went back to pull some clips, and I realized the ombre matches their clothing or the tone of the scene, so I like it even more. And this has been just about two solid minutes of only ASL in a blockbuster movie. You'd love to see it. Look, not to be all, but it's also about violence, but again, I say at least it isn't professional face slapping. And whatever the truth, I like that Jordan chose to talk about the sport in a way that goes beyond heart, even though that's still a big part of his story. It's actually Kehlani performing their song. It's gotta be weird to play yourself in a film. They are now canon in the Rocky verse. Also, this song is a bop, although I'm bummed this is the first Creed soundtrack with no Tessa Thompson, but I guess it's character continuity, so that a win. Getting his Don King on. <laughs> Minus the hair. Thank God. <laughs> yeah. Also, as far as we know, Donnie has never stomped an employee to death, so that's another way he's different from Don King. How about Donnie? Think he misses boxing? No, not that he tells me. Would he? What I love about this is if these two were closer, it would just seem like a friend asking a question. Instead, it's someone from Bianca's husband's past planting a seed of doubt. Not my man Draco. I hated his dad. I was conflicted about him, and now he's my bud. You stay away from him. But Dame will fight tooth and nail. I mean, he literally warns you what Dame is about. Uh, it's very good. Andrew and, and, and boxing. Love the choice to have Dame sort of trip over his words. It shows his excitement at finally getting a chance and really nails down the underdog status. Dame. Dame. Anderson. <laughs> a lovely moment with these two reunited friends before it all falls to crap. Hot diggity, there's some stuff happening here. Does Dame realize that Donnie paused? Seems so. Does he know why? Probably. The conflict between them that's just bubbling under the surface for the first hour never comes to a head until after the fight. This moment feels like Donnie running through all the things Dame is feeling, even questioning his own rise to champ. Oh my God. Oh my God. Walking out with no entourage to Nipsey is a flex. This should have been everyone's first hint that things might go differently. Badass, conflicted guy? But dang, that is also quite the entrance. Okay, up to this point, I was neutral on Felix only because they just haven't shown much of his character besides fighting. But he gives Amara a fist bump right before the fight. I'm Team Felix. From the Crypto.com arena. <laughs> the Crypto.com arena will never not be funny to me. And Jonathan Major's workout routine. El Guerrero. El Guerrero means warrior, so yeah, that checks out. I go in there like if I'm a warrior. The strategy of dead arming your opponent is so genius and also diabolical. And from what I can read, it's totally legal, and most boxing experts say it would just be a stupid waste of energy, but hey, whatever works for you. Okay, that seems illegal, but it's pretty minor, all things considered. I'm glad they didn't just have him cheat to win, if you know what I'm saying. I love that Dane pushes his coach out of the way so he can stare down Felix and also so he can see what he hurt. Even this is really dangerous, and he should lose points, but it's not the reason Dame wins. 
Whoa. Perfect piece of horror movie sound design there, and I'd like to never watch that again. Love the red and green colors reflected all over Dame. He comes into Felix's world, but he's tearing it up. There's no such thing as defeat. Let's go. Also, I expect more from you, Gloria. You should take some notes from Ivan Drago. You know I'm not gonna be a fan of the cheap shots, but like I said, Dame won despite some of his sketchy choices in the ring, not because of them. He was the better fighter and also clearly 75 pounds heavier, but we're not gonna worry about that. I guess Donnie's shaking his head at Dame since he's celebrating while Felix is clearly still hurt. Otherwise, why you mad, bro? That's sport. You stay away from the gym, you do that. And stay away for a while. I'll talk about this more in the conclusion, but I'm a little confused what Duke's problem is. Like, if Drago had fought and won, would Duke still be pissed? Dame beat your fighter. Not to be insensitive, but your fighter probably should have fought better? This gets a win just because this is how parents text. No context, just I need to talk to you. Aren't they mad at me? Did someone die? Do they just need help figuring out the TV remote again? Who could say? Great example of how invincible winning must have made Dame feel because there's no way having that gun isn't breaking his parole. You put the gloves on my hands. I think there's a lot to talk about when it comes to Dame and how he's really not a villain, but this turn he does from meek and mild to cocky and hostile, mwah. Baby Creed. Consistency, he's still not a fan of that nickname. <laughs> Even after a sucker punch, I'm saying there's more to Dame than just being a bad guy. He's got a lot of pent up resentment from watching Donnie live the life he thinks he deserves. I don't wanna talk about anything. I've been trying to forget it. It's dead, leave it, leave it, let it lie. I'm gonna call this Jordan's goodwill hunting homage because I love to watch him do his thing behind and in front of the camera. Fun fact, that's an actual Ralph Lauren ad that Michael B. Jordan is featured in. In fact, several of the suits he wears in the film are part of a Creed collection from Ralph Lauren. And I look just like that in them because we're very similar. This film has so much movement that the film nerd in me loves the gorgeous little static shot here. Adonis, that's his name. He saved me, Apollo. He helped me to forgive you. All right, so let me look at my list. Cry at all three Creed movies, check. Definitely did that. Bare minimum, this scene. I love you, kid. Oh. Oh. And this scene. What's your name? Green. What's your name? Green. I didn't know how to handle it, but you're always really good at that. Feelings. It comes easy to you. It doesn't come easy to me, and I don't always know how to talk about it either. I love that she doesn't let him get away with that cop out. So often people who keep everything bottled up think that those who talk about stuff can just naturally open up, but it takes work and practice no matter who you are. I never called. I didn't write. After a while, it felt easier to pretend. I'm like, I forgot. Solid win for Donnie owning up to his part in abandoning Dame. Yeah, Marianne hid the letters, but the US Postal Service works both ways. And the most airtight, albeit unnecessary, retcon for the past movies. And Dame wasted no time getting his victory shots up on the wall. A coward, bro. And a fraud. I know it. Everybody else knew it. Hey. Uh, Apollo, Apollo Creed would be shamed. And that's when I fully wanted Creed to wreck Dame. Look, Dame has already crossed the line a bunch, but with his past and his clear trauma, I was willing to let it slide. But you want to bring people's parents in this? Their dead parents? Nope, Team Creed, baby, all the way. We know Dame. Dame gonna have his damn list memorized. Nothing gets me more hyped than a cut back and forth montage of two boxers getting ready to fight. And a little touch of Donnie's beard, his goatee a little long, giving him that old man Lagannis look. How's that? What you get? With you. <gasps> My guy is back, and he's helping train his best bud. Just warms the heart to see these two who were mortal enemies, all friendly. But you, you know what I mean. I love that Drago starts out by shoving Creed, gets him out of his comfort zone, and also we've all seen that Dame has some unorthodox methods. True bud right there. Here for this piece of the score. I have that same confidence when I take off my shin guards mid soccer practice. Creed and I are very similar. So just like everybody's workout routine. Also a double training montage is the fastest way to compare a Donnie yell to a Dame bark. He was from Wakanda. Depends what you mean by from, cause sorta. Also another dope static shot that shows how ridiculously strong Creed is. Aw, oh, Rocky's still in there in his head. Not to mention one of his final training shots where he squares off against what Rocky said would always be his toughest opponent. Also, Creed's robe is killer. It has the nod to the classic Apollo Creed choice of the US red, white, and blue, but it fades into red, black, and green, giving a nod to David Hammond's African-American flag, which itself is a mix of the US flag and the Pan-African flag. Love it. 
This moment made a smile come across my face that I could not stop. His fans cheering him on, he's back where he belongs. It's different because he's not the underdog, he's already loved, but it works in a whole new way. Odd to cheer on the establishment, but dang it, it works when he's coming out of retirement. Wake up to look inside my daughter's eyes and realize I'm immortalized. I mean, if you're gonna walk out to Big Sean, the obvious pick is I don't F with you or maybe even bounce back. But I'll say the lyrics here are pretty on point. As long as I'm up, that it's never your turn in. Look, they must have forgot that I'm my daddy, son. Kill him. Nah. And then Dame keeping it consistent and representing Crenshaw with Nipsey again. You get it, lady. Welcome to the Battle of Los Angeles. Also a great album and a better movie than it's given credit. These movies have always made a point of letting us know what name Donnie chooses to wear in his shorts, and after accepting Creed as his legacy, he's now back wearing his own name, Adonis, fully embracing himself. Some of the character choices that Majors made sell him as a real person, the way he's always messing with his waistband, the way he moves his mouth to one side or squeezes his eyes shut. No doubt Dame has the upper hand. He looks to be in phenomenal shape. Yeah, geez, Donnie, what are you made of? Marshmallows? <laughs> eh, if it ain't broke. Each martial arts style has its own way of being filmed, and Jordan and his DP Kramer Morgenthau captured the best way to make boxing look fast and powerful, the way the camera dodges with Donnie. All right, Donnie, I'll see you in a minute. Don't worry, I'll be right back. Is this fight just becoming a win every few seconds? It is. It's for the banter this time. Dame can't shake Donnie this time. I think my favorite thing about Dame is that he's the first boxer in any of these movies to use a cross arm guard. And even without any real boxing knowledge, we clearly see they each have a distinct style. And even though it's a legitimate tactic, it makes Dame seem otherworldly like Donnie is fighting a street fighter instead of a boxer. Oof, the looks, the thoughts, all the hurt and trauma these two shared right there in those looks. I'm just gonna keep saying it, Dame isn't a villain. He definitely isn't the villain the trailer sold. I love this. They both see their friend, and at the core of that friend is a kid who was abused. This is rough and so well done. They've both got a lot to fight for, and they both seem to be realizing that about the other during this round. <laughs> the score mixed with their grunts on top of the silence is a genius move. The anger these two have is on full display. <laughs> The mattress post. There's so much to unpack here. Obviously, they used one as a punching bag, but we only know that because Leon beat them up in the same memory. Boxing was clearly Dame's escape from that life, an escape he was taking Donnie with him on. But now the violence is between brothers. It's not the same. Boxing is not the same as kids being abused. Please don't misunderstand me. But you also can't tell me there wouldn't be moments where Donnie and Dame both think, what the hell are we doing? And I'm just not the right guy to talk about it, but I think there's even more stuff happening here, exploring their pasts, poverty, the foster system, mass incarceration, health, even for-profit sports, it's all there for you to contemplate. Let go of the fear, let go of the guilt, let go of it, dog. Let go of whatever was, and walk into what is. Dang, can Duke follow me around and say stuff like that to me, please? <laughs> Brutal, the sweat bounce. And I am loving the way Jordan leaned into the anime influence. And he's a... I like the Dame wants Donnie to get up, even he knows the fight isn't over yet. Oh crap, what was I saying about the cross arm guard? Maybe don't. I love that he still earns the Rocky victory music even with a slightly different arrangement. And look, Dame needed to learn and Donnie needed to prove that he really earned it. But that doesn't mean I don't cry a little inside for Dame and so does Donnie. Guess you did learn a few moves without me. Man, for some reason the delivery of that line is absolutely heartbreaking to me. We were just kids, bro. It ain't on you. Like that. It wasn't on you either. Oh, hey, I'm crying again. Neat. Reconciliation. Oh god, they're doing the handshake? Guys, I can only cry so much before my well-crafted, tough guy YouTube image is negatively impacted. There's something endlessly tragic about Donnie going back to a room full of celebrating friends and family and Dame on his own once again. It doesn't sit right, and I don't think it's supposed to, which is probably why Jordan decided to have Donnie do this after. Maybe it's just the dad and me watching him lift her up when he just had his big moment, or maybe it's this piece of music that played during the bike run in the first movie, but dang, dang, this is a good movie.
Creed 3 has some of the biggest emotional punches of the series, which is surprising considering who it lacks. But I only have two real issues. The first is that the casting of real boxers, which is awesome, made the Felix Dame weight mismatch pretty jarring. Don't get me wrong, Jose Benavidez Jr. does a great job as Felix Chavez. But IRL, he's a welterweight and even sometimes a light welterweight. He's supposed to be the heavyweight champion, but he looks vastly outmuscled against Dame. There's a reason they don't mention their weights during the intros, because no one is buying that he's 200 pounds. But oh well, it sold that Dame was a monster. The other one is how mad everyone gets when Dame beats Felix. I know, Felix is Donnie's protege, and I know that everyone expected Felix to crush Dame, and I know that Duke had warned that Dame was out to hurt the world, and I know that this elbow cut is a big deal even if it didn't directly lead to him winning, but other than that, I really don't understand how this scene is played. Bianca takes Amara out as if a guy getting punched in the face a bunch isn't like, the whole reason they're all there. Duke bans Donnie from the gym. Getting hurt is literally a main component of the sport. After every round, they get blood washed off their faces. My only guess is that this scene was cut down or reshot, and Dame did something at one point that was way out of bounds, but Jordan and Kugler realized they'd rather have him stay mostly likable but left in everyone's reactions. And look, I respect the writing for Dame. The easy script to write here has Dame using cheap shots in that first fight when he's younger, and it's his thing. You can still excuse it because he says he means to win by any means necessary, but instead, he's a legitimate fighter, and as I've said like 87 times now, he's not the bad guy everyone treats him like. I mean, he did have Drago's arm broken, which is like the definition of unchill, but hey, Drago seems fine now, but this scene is about the fight and is a pivotal moment for the story that doesn't quite check out for me. And the only reason I'm even focusing on it this much is because I think the story of Creed 3 is fantastic. Donnie and Dane both got a raw deal as kids, but Donnie not only got to grow up in Bel Air in the height of luxury and a job set up for him, remember the first scene in Creed, but he also had the benefit of a friend who wouldn't snitch on him. The film really is in so many ways about opportunity and privilege. So much of Dame's life is taken from him in prison. And when he comes out, he's both timid and ferocious, which if you know anyone who has done some real time, that can often be the case. And again, by the time you're watching this, I really have no clue where Jonathan Majors will be with his legal troubles. But for now, I'll say that he really nails it as Damien. He clearly expresses all of the character's hurt and anger, and it's a joy to watch. The emotion he shows in his face without any lines is incredible, and the film wouldn't be half of what it is without him, which honestly might affect the film's longevity depending on how things go with the current accusations against him. And Michael B. Jordan is Adonis Creed. It's great to watch such a skilled and talented actor get to spend so much time with a character. And three films in, I would almost worry I'd have a hard time seeing him in other roles, except that he's clearly one of the best actors of the generation. So really, I just can't wait to see what else he does. And he clearly knows what he's doing in the director's chair as well. I'm just glad he's not absurdly handsome or like chiseled out of stone. Otherwise, I might feel a little jealous. Lil. Finally, for some, there is a rocky-shaped hole in this film. We now know from some interviews with Stallone that the lack of his involvement is mostly to do with his own anger around some old dude who owns the character of Rocky. And while Creed 2 gives a borderline perfect ending to that character, and this film at no point needs Rocky, there are some moments that feel like they would mean more with him there. Duke does a decent job in the mentor role in this film, but the emotional impact isn't there quite as much with Rock. It does force Donnie to be his own man, which was Rocky's send-off to him, which works especially well with Dame as his opponent since he also pretty much rides solo. All that said, I wouldn't mind if he showed up in Creed 4 and just photoshop him into the background of Marianne's funeral. Next week, Dungeons & Dragons Honor Among Thieves, and it's already live, ad-free for you beautiful Nebula subscribers a full week early. If you're missing out, use my link and get 40% off an annual subscription, which comes out to $2.50 a month. Then you'll have access to all my original videos I've made there, as well as my videos that are longer and uncensored, plus tons of other creators' original videos and classes they've made, plus a bunch of us are doing Nebula First, where you get to see our next video a whole cycle early, which is over a month for some creators. Speaking of uncensored, if you're not on Nebula yet, you're missing all all of Maggie Mae Fish's new original series, Unrated, which is on episode 5 already, all about censorship and sweaty people. Oh, also speaking of Guy Fieri, Lindsay Ellis has a new vid about him. Oh wait, that's next week's video. Which is on Nebula. But Nebula is so much more than even all that. It's truly a way for many of us to stop worrying about YouTube's overzealous content ID system, as well as its demonetization system that can make creating impossible. We never have to bow to advertisers because we don't have any. There's never any ads. And the creators on Nebula are essentially hand-picked, so we're all very confident in our fair use status. So follow my link and try it out. I guarantee you won't be disappointed. 